Hello guys, in this video we are going to learn about the free force diagram. So this is the part one of the series of videos that we are going to make about free force diagram. If you see the entire series, you can solve any free force diagram question. That's my guarantee. So again, welcome to Ibithros X tape. So we are going to focus on some key concepts. The key concepts are the contact forces and the non-contact forces and the steps to make a free force diagram. So what are contact forces? The forces that are exerted by two surfaces in contact are contact forces. So let me elaborate the concept of contact forces with the help of an example. In this figure, we have a box which is sitting on the floor. So over here, you can see that this is the box of mass M1, which is actually sitting on the ground, right? So this is the ground. So over here, I can argue that as the block is sitting on the ground, what can I say that the lowermost surface of the block of mass M1, right? So that this is the lowermost surface. So this is your surface one is in contact with the uppermost surface of the ground, right? So this is the uppermost surface of the ground. Okay, I can argue that why I am arguing that see the block of mass M1 is technically sitting on the ground, right? So if it is sitting on the ground, the lowermost surface of block of mass M1, this is the lowermost surface, right? Is in contact with the uppermost surface of the ground, right? So this is the uppermost surface. Why they are in contact? Because the block of mass M1 is technically sitting on the ground. So that means over here we have established that surface 1 and surface 2 are in contact right so then what will happen surface one will exert a force towards surface two and the value of that force will be n1 okay so why is surface one exerting a force towards surface two why because they are in contact with each other and the surfaces that are in contact with each other they exert forces on each other right so that means over here surface one will give a force towards surface two okay and the value of their force will be n1 okay now by newton's third law of motion we know that every action has an equal and opposite reaction right so as surface one is giving a force towards surface two what will happen surface two will exert the same force towards surface one right so that means what will happen surface two will exert the same force towards surface one by newton's third law of motion right and the value of their force will be n1 okay so let me explain again surface one is exerting a force towards surface two because they are in contact with each other and the value of that force is n1 right so by newton's third law of motion every force has an equal and opposite reaction right so as surface one is exerting a force towards surface two surface two will exert the same force n1 towards surface one right in this manner n1 in this way we can see that the contact forces actually form action reaction pair right so n1 is the action which is produced by surface one on surface two why because they were in contact with each other right so similarly when surface one produced a force towards surface two surface two also produced the same force towards surface one that is n1 but in the opposite direction following newton's third law of motion so in this way contact forces acts on surfaces in contact so what are non-contact forces so a non-contact force is a force which acts on an object without coming physically in contact with it okay so we can explain non-contact forces with the help of few examples the first being a magnet attracting nails and the second being a skydiver falling from the sky so over here let us take an example in this example the skydiver is actually falling towards the earth okay so suppose this is the skydiver and this is the earth okay so although the earth and the skydiver are not in contact the earth will still exert a force mg on the skydiver right so that means over here see that the earth and the skydiver are not actually in contact still the earth is applying a force mg on the skydiver which is pulling the skydiver towards the earth right so although so technically the skydiver is not in contact with the ground but still the earth is applying a force of mg on the skydiver right so that means the weight of the skydiver that is your mg is your non-contact force so that means the non-contact force does not require any contact between the surface to act okay so it simply acts so over here the weight of the body is an example of non-contact force so over here let us take an example of magnet and nails 
so over here see that although the magnet and the nails are not in contact with each other when i'll bring the magnet closer to the nails what will happen the magnet will exert a force f on the nails and it will attract the nails towards it so that means although the magnet and the nails are not in contact with each other the magnet still exerts a force f on the nails when it is brought closer to the nails right so that means the magnetic force exerted by the magnet is an example of non contact force it simply acts when the magnet is brought closer to the nails now let us see the steps to make a free force diagram okay so the step number 1 you have to identify the bodies step number 2 you have to isolate the bodies by isolating the bodies i mean at vertical height or horizontal height that means make some spacing between the bodies step number 3 is to identify the contact forces and step number 4 is to identify the non contact forces so we will do examples and see how to make the free force diagrams so over here we need to draw the free force diagram of the block of mass m which is uh, sitting on the ground okay so that means what was the step one the step one was to identify the bodies right so over here the bodies are the block of mass m right the block of mass m okay and what is the second the second is the ground right so that means the second is the the second body is the ground okay so that means the ground is where the block of mass m is sitting right so first the so the first step is complete we have successfully identified the bodies right so what is the second step the second step is to isolate the bodies right so that means add some vertical distance between the bodies so i have added some vertical distance between the bodies right so that means over here now see that so this is the lower most surface of the block of mass m right so this is the lower most surface suppose this is the surface one right and this is the upper most surface of the ground right so this is the surface two right so that means as the body of mass m is sitting on the ground so that means surface 1 and surface 2 are in contact right so that means surface 1 so that means surface 1 will exert a force towards surface 2 and the value of that force will be n1 why surface 1 is exerting a force towards surface 2 because the surface 1 and surface 2 are in contact right so that means surface one is exerting a force towards surface two the value of that force is n1 okay similarly what will happen surface two will also exert the same force on surface one by but in the opposite direction okay why because of newton's third law of motion every force has an equal and opposite reaction as surface one exerted a force towards surface two because they are in contact with each other surface two will also exert a force towards surface one the same force but in the opposite direction right so that means in this way there will be n1 so our contact forces have been identified are any more surfaces in contact no no surfaces are in contact okay so that means we have successfully found out the free force diagram for the contact forces now for the non contact force so what is the non contact force the weight of the body right so that means the weight of the body doesn't need any contact to act it always acts downward towards the earth right so that means the non contact force will be mg downwards mg so that means the free force diagram of the block of mass m will be this and the free force diagram of the ground will be this so proceeding on to the next question we have two blocks okay so one block is of mass m1 and the other block is of mass m2 and m1 is sitting on top of m2 and m2 is sitting on the ground so over here we need to draw the free force diagram of m1 m2 and the ground okay so again what is the first step the first step is to identify the bodies right so that means there are three bodies involved over here the block of mass m1 the block of mass m2 and the ground right so that means the bodies are block of mass m1 block of mass m2 and the ground okay so that means we have successfully identified the bodies that are associated in this figure now proceeding on to the second step what we need to do we need to isolate the bodies okay so that means we have to isolate the bodies right 
so over here see that i have successfully isolated the body so what do i mean by isolating the bodies we are adding vertical height in between the bodies right so that means over here next we have to identify the contact forces right so that means over here see that the lowermost surface of the block of mass m1 is in contact with the uppermost surface of the block of mass m2 right so that means the lowermost surface of the block of mass m1 is in contact with the uppermost surface of the block of mass m2 okay suppose they are one and two so that means surface one and surface two are in contact right so that means surface one will exert a force towards surface two and the value of that force will be n1 why surface one is exerting a force towards surface two because they are in contact with each other right so over here the value of that force will be n1 similarly by newton's third law of motion surface two will also exert the same force but in the opposite direction right so over here surface 2 will exert the same force but in the opposite direction and the value of the force will be again n1 right same force but in the opposite direction that is your n1 okay now again are there any more contact uh, contact places yeah see over here the lowermost surface of the block of mass m2 that is surface 3 is in contact with the uppermost surface of the ground right uppermost surface of the ground so that means what is happening again surface 2 is in con surface 3 is in contact with surface 4 right so as surface 3 is in contact with surface 4 surface 3 will exert a force towards surface 4 and the value of that force will be n2 why this is n2 because n1 is already been taken okay n1 is already being taken so now again by newton's third law of motion as surface 3 is exerting a force towards surface 4 what newton's third law of motion says every force has an equal and opposite reaction so surface 4 obeying newton's third law of motion so surface 4 obeying newton's third law of motion will exert the same force but in the opposite direction so surface 4 will exert a force towards surface 3 the same force and the value of that force is n2 okay so that means for surface 3 to 4 surface 3 will exert a force towards surface 4 n2 okay by newton's third law of motion surface 4 will also exert a force towards surface 3 value of that force is n2 okay so that means we have successfully identified all the contact forces are there any more contact points no there are not any more contact points okay now we have to identify the non-contact forces so what are the non-contact forces the weight of the body right the weight of the body because the weight of the body does not need any contact to act it always acts towards the center of the earth right so that means for m1 the weight of the body will be downwards and the weight will be m1g and for N m2 the weight of the body will be downward and the value will be m2g right so we have successfully drawn the free force diagram so the free force diagram of M m1 is this free force diagram of m2 is this and the free force diagram of the ground is this so proceeding on to the next question in this figure we have two blocks m1 and m2 which are placed on the ground so we need to find out the free force diagram of m1 m2 and the ground okay so that means again following step number one what was our step number one the step number one was to identify the bodies right so the over here the bodies are m1 m2 and the ground right now what was step two step two was to isolate the bodies right so that means in the step two what will we do is that we will be isolating the bodies okay step two was isolate so over here we have successfully so over here we have successfully isolated the bodies so what do you mean by isolate the bodies isolating the bodies mean adding some distance between the bodies right so so over here see that the lowermost surface of the block of mass m1 that is your surface one is in contact with the uppermost surface of the ground right so that means over here i can see that surface one 
and surface 2 are in contact so surface 1 will exert a force towards surface 2 and the value of that force will be n1 why surface 1 exerting a force towards surface 2 because surface 1 and surface 2 are in contact so over here this will be the value of the force n1 that surface 1 exerts on surface 2 okay so by newton's third law of motion similarly surface 2 will also exert the same force but in the opposite direction right so that means the value of the force will be n1 right so over here surface 2 will exert a force the same force n1 but in the opposite direction on surface 1 okay again again so over here you can see that the lowermost section of the block of mass m2 is in contact with the uppermost section of the ground right so over here name this as surface 3 and this as surface 4 right so over here i can see that if i just move down a bit uh, surface 3 is in contact with surface 4 right so that means surface 3 will exert a force towards surface 4 why because surface 3 and 4 are in contact and the value of that force will be n2 right so that means surface 3 is exerting a force towards surface 4 okay and this is n2 why n2 because n1 we have taken over here right so now similarly by the newton's third law of motion as surface 3 is exerting a force towards surface 4 because they are in contact surface 4 will also exert the same force n2 but in the opposite direction right so that means surface 4 will exert n2 but in the opposite direction so that means in this direction it will be exerting the value of n2 right are there more surfaces in contact yes you have to see that block m1 and block m2 are also kept in contact right so by keeping in contact it means that this surface the extreme right surface of the block of mass m1 that is your surface 5 is in contact with the extreme left surface of the block of mass m2 right why because see in the figure they are kept having a common side right so that means they are touching each other so when they are touching each other it means they are exerting contact okay so that means again what will happen surface 5 and surface 6 are in contact right so that means what is happening is that surface 5 will exert a force towards surface 6 and the value of their force will be n1 is taken n2 is taken so n3 value of the force will be n3 why surface 5 is exerting a force towards surface 6 because they are in contact with each other so that means over here the value of that force will be n3 i am marking it with white color now so similarly surface 6 will exert the same force but in the opposite direction why by newton's third law of motion and the value of the force is n3 okay so over here this is n3 are any more surfaces in contact no further no surface is in contact right m1 was in contact with m2 m1 was in contact with ground and m2 was in contact with ground okay you can identify this from the figure now we have successfully drawn the free so now we have successfully drawn the free force diagram for the contact forces now for the non-contact force so what is the non-contact force that is the yeah that is very good that is the weight of the body right now for m1 the weight of the body will be m1g acting downward right and for m2 the weight of the body will be m2g acting downward right so that means we have successfully drawn the free force diagram of m1 m2 and the ground so that means the free force diagram of m1 is this okay the free force diagram of m2 is this okay and the free force diagram of the ground is this okay so proceeding on to the next question in this question there are two blocks m1 and m2 okay m2 is kept on top of m1 and m1 is kept on the ground okay so this is the ground and we need to find out the free force diagram of m1 m2 and the ground right so we need to find the free force diagram of m1 m2 and the ground okay so again just follow the steps what is the step one identify the bodies okay so what are the bodies in this case the bodies are m1 m2 and the ground right so these are the bodies right so that means what is the next step the next step is to isolate the bodies right so that means we are just isolating the bodies okay over here we are isolating the bodies by isolating the bodies i mean we are adding vertical distances between the bodies right so that means we are just separating the bodies okay so 
we have successfully isolated the bodies now proceeding on to step number three we have to identify the contact forces right see over here the lowermost surface of the block of mass m1 that is your surface one is in contact with the uppermost surface of the ground right so this is the uppermost surface of the ground that is surface two okay so that means what is happening is that see over here in this case surface one is in contact with surface two so again in the same manner surface one will exert a force towards surface two and the value of that force will be n1 okay so that means over here the value of the force will be n1 similarly what will happen surface two will exert the same force on surface one the value of their force will be n1 why by newton's third law of motion as surface one is exerting force on surface two surface two will also exert the same and uh, surface two will also exert the same force but in the opposite direction right so that means n1 will act in this direction on the block of mass m1 so over here again see that the lowermost surface of the block of mass m2 that is your surface 3 is in contact with the uppermost surface of the block of mass m1 right surface 4 okay so that means again what is happening so that means again what is happening so that means surface 3 will exert a force towards surface 4 why because they are in contact with each other and the value of their force will be n2 okay keep in mind the force that surfaces exert on each other are perpendicular to the surface perpendicular to the surface perpendicular to the surface okay so that means over here surface 3 will exert a force towards surface 4 but perpendicular to the surface see over here this is the surface right surface 4 is this right and perpendicular to the surface direction is this right so this is the direction perpendicular to the surface right so that means surface 3 will exert a force on surface 4 but in the perpendicular direction right to surface 4 so that means the value of n2 will be over here it's very important right the surfaces exert force in the perpendicular direction similarly what will happen surface 4 will exert the same force but in the opposite direction to surface 3 and the value of their force will be n2 why is surface 4 giving force to surface 3 because of newton's third law as surface 3 exerted a force on surface 4 similarly i am drawing over here surface 4 is exerting a force on surface 3 n2 okay note that these forces are perpendicular to the surface okay this force is perpendicular to the surface and this force is perpendicular to the surface in fact all the forces are perpendicular to the surface right so are there any more surfaces in contact no you can examine and see that there are no surfaces in contact so that means we have successfully completed step number three now we have to complete step number four that is we have to identify the non-contact force so what are the non-contact force the weight of the body right that weight of the body okay so that means for m1 the weight of the body will be downward that is m1g right and for m2 the weight of the body will be downward that is your m2g okay weight of the body always acts downward okay always acts downwards towards the surface of the earth right so that means in this way so that means in this way we are going to find out the free force diagram of the blocks right so that means for the block of mass m2 this will be the free force diagram okay so this will be the free force diagram n2 is acting from the surface 3 to the surface 4 and mg is acting downwards now for the block of mass m2 this will be the free force diagram right so over here n2 is coming from the surface 4 towards the surface 3 n1 is coming from the ground to this surface and mg is acting downwards okay and this is the free force diagram of the ground over here n2 is coming from the surface 2 towards the surface 2.